Now, I think these are two lights that could be extremely valuable to YouTubers and documentary filmmakers and narrative storytellers. And we have seen these form factors of lights before, a small panel light, kind of a big pocket light, or a wand light, a handheld wand light. What we haven't seen is the brightness that we're getting out of these. And that is really what changes everything. This is a 40 watt sort of oversized pocket light. I can't understate how bright this is. It is unbelievable the amount of light that you get out of this. And then we've got the 100 watt wand light. But I don't just wanna talk about lights. I'm gonna show you what they do. So I've got a few different scenes here to show you how they work. And in this first bit, what I've done is I've replaced my normal YouTube lighting setup with one of the wand lights and two of the pocket lights. And almost to my disgust, I think it actually looks better than my $1,500 professional lighting setup that I run with normally. And it costs maybe less than 25% of the price or something like that. But you be the judge. Here is my studio setup just using these lights. Now here's one example of the way you could use the F100. And in this case, I've actually got two M40 lights lighting the scene. And essentially I've just replaced my normal softbox setup and my normal YouTube setup with these lights. And I've achieved a very, very similar look with a kit that all can run off battery and can all fit just in like a small backpack. So if you wanna shoot interviews, professional looking interviews, or if you want to set up like a mobile YouTube video sort of studio type thing where you're going to an Airbnb or sort of a house somewhere or you're going over to a friend's house and you wanna shoot videos, you can put all this in a tiny little bag and you can just roll with it. In fact, with the combo kit, you can actually fit one of the lights and one of the F100 lights and two of the M40 sort of small lights and you've got your kit in this tiny little bag that the, uh, the combo kit comes in. So that can be an entire YouTube studio lighting setup in this little bag. So you'll see I've got my camera here and then just back here I have got that F100 light. And what I'm doing is I am just bouncing it off a white sheet that I've got hanging there. Now you wouldn't necessarily have to use a white sheet. If you have a white wall, you can use that and that'd be fine. Just the way that I've got these things set up here, I just needed to hang up a white sheet. The other thing that you could do is rather than bouncing it off a white sheet, you could actually have a shower curtain that you might use as diffusion. Just wad that up, throw it in your bag, and then you shoot that from behind that shower curtain and then that will just diffuse that light and create a softer light, a more flattering light on your subject yourself or the person you're interviewing. Viewing. And just back here, I've just got a little light on the desk. Now this uh, light is just lighting up that wall, making it so there's like no shadows behind me. I'm just creating sort of a nice backdrop. And then up here, I have another one of the M40s and that is just a hair light. And the hair light, what it's doing is if you look, it's just giving us a little, little bit of an outline to the side of my head here and just creating some definition there. That's all that's doing. So now you've got a complete professional looking either YouTube or interview setup that will all fit in either a small backpack or just this sort of little case that comes with the combo kit. So that will handle an F100 and two of the M40 lights, no problem. Now I also think the F100 is perfect for run and gun filmmaking, narrative storytelling, and documentary work. And that's because you've got a 100 watt light that can be handheld and comes with a number of items to help you control the light. One is the barn doors, the second is the soft box that you can put on the outside, and then the third is the grid. So you've got three different options for controlling that light. And because it's handheld and because it's got a huge battery for this sort of 100 watt light, you can use it in situations where rather than setting up an entire lighting setup, you just turn this light on and I've got it set at 2700 Kelvin and 100%. And if I have somebody just out of shot hand holding this light, now I've got light that looks like it's motivated from that window. It looks like it's coming from this window to, to my right. It's actually adding a little bit of light to what's coming from that window already, but I've got it set to 2700 Kelvin. So now it looks like a sunset. It's a very sort of warm, flattering sort of light on my skin. And all you do is just play with, you know, look at the camera, look at the monitor, and just have your lighting at Gaffer just sort of play with where you want the position of that light. If you want it fairly dramatic, you might be more to the side. If you want it sort of a bit more flattering, you might have it sort of a little bit more front on. But 
This is one light and one person standing there with a light that is completely transforming this shot. And really, when you talk about sort of cost and production cost and speed, all things that are super critical on sort of small films, short films, documentary film work for independent filmmakers, this can really be kind of a big deal. In these next shots, what I've done is I've gone under a bridge with my two daughters to just try to figure out what we can do with this 40 watt pocket light. And the first thing that I was shocked about is when we turned it on, I mean, it was the middle of the night, it lit up the entire underside of the bridge. Like, you have got a lot of light here. This gives you ability to bounce it off things or shine it through things, stuff that you couldn't normally do with a light of this size. So we just had a play with it. We sort of created some harsh shadows. We created some sort of dramatic scenes. We did some backlighting. But the thing that really stood out more than anything was the amount of light that was coming out of this little light. I didn't imagine that we were going to get this sort of power out of this little light, but we did, and it was a bit of fun, and we caught some sort of interesting scenes, and I'll play this little bit at the end so you just enjoy this kind of little mini horror sort of show or a few horror clips that we put together. <laughs> Those are only a few of the things that you could do with these lights. And once again, because of the power of the light, because of the level of output, you have a lot of flexibility with what you can do with these things. You can either bounce them off things to get a sort of softer light. You can shoot them through things to get a softer light, or you can shine them straight at things, maybe at full brightness to get an extremely harsh light. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do when you have that level of power, which is the difference between these lights and other lights that we've seen on the market. The form factor is fine, but we've seen it before. It's the brightness, it's the wattage. That's where these things are different than what we've seen before. And the pocket light is a pretty straightforward affair. You've just got an on off switch, which takes you from zero to 100% brightness. And then you have your Kelvin control going from 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. Now I found that the, the 40 watt pocket light to me I think it was probably as bright as the wand light. I'm not sure, but when I was using it, it seemed that way. So I found this to be an incredible value. And if you're just looking for something small, maximum light output, this is an incredible little piece of kit. Now, when it comes to the wand light, the wand light is a little bit of a different affair. It actually comes with some light modifiers in the box. So it comes with this barn door setup, which just clips on and does come on and off. The, oh, the other thing I will mention, you see the back of it, you see this series of fans? This is because there's so much wattage in this wand light that it has to cool the wand light to stop it from overheating. So it's got a heat sink across the back and then it has these series of fans. I was concerned, particularly when I'm looking to use it with an interview or sort of narrative filmmaking and you're getting it in close, you might hear those fans you don't hear them at all. And I think maybe it's because they're so, sm so small, like maybe that's why, but you can feel the air coming through, but you don't hear anything. So I think that's really good. You can get them really in close and you're not gonna have it get into the microphone or screwing up your scene. So you've got the barn doors, but in addition to that, if you wanna soften that light up, you have this soft box that just pulls over the barn doors. And now we just, just clip it around the outside there. Now we have a soft box. And you wouldn't think this makes much of a difference, but when you look at actually the size of the area now compared to what the size of the LED area it is, it actually probably does give you potentially up to three times softer light. And as we know with light, the closer you get to your subject, the softer the light is. So you can turn this on sort of a nice dim low level. And if you're just doing somebody a headshot and you're just getting it sort of close in the scene, you're actually going to be able to get a very soft light using this little soft box. Now on the other extreme, if we want our light to be more harsh and more direct, we actually have a grid. 
which also slides right on the barn doors. And this creates a, an extremely direct light. And let me just get it on there. And we just slide that on like that. And then the other side goes on like that. There we go. And then it's got these Velcro straps that go along to just hold it on. And now we have our barn doors. And this is going to give us extremely direct light. The only thing I will mention that when I was using this, there were times, depending on what surface I was shooting on, you do get a little bit of the grid effect, which I would prefer did not happen. But it's minor, and I think in most situations, as long as you're not shining it on like a perfectly flat background, you're not really gonna be able to tell that effect's there. But in some situations, you do notice the grid effect. And I will put links in the description down below to the pricing and specifications for these units. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask, because I am honestly so impressed with these units. I've got no problems answering any questions you've got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.